Hello and welcome to this second video about the Shimano STR8070 hydraulic brake lever. So let's repeat the story one more time. Um, I had a lot of trouble in filling the hydraulic brake system, system after I replaced the hoses of my, my race bike and uh, there was no chance of uh, filling the hydraulic system and that's the reason why I stripped down this lever and um, try to understand what's going on inside a lever like that and why it is sometimes so difficult to fill it with hydraulic fuel fluid. So that's the reason why I created these two tutorials. The first tutorial that's all about the basic function of the lever so if you want to learn uh, about the lever itself, please have a look at the first video where I'm explaining the hydraulic and mechanic, mechanical parts of the lever. And now in the second part, we will focus on the basic adjustments of the lever. So we have two little nice tiny screws that you can screw in and something happens inside the lever. And then we will do some troubleshooting and I will explain why it can be that hard to fill this lever with fresh oil. All right, then let's jump into the content and let's focus on the lever. Um, I will repeat the basic function. I will explain it one more time. We have the yellow lever that's here. We have the main pivot. That's the black point right here. And we have the magic blue pusher that is pushing the piston. We can see it in a view in a second to the front. So if we rotate the lever, the lever is rotating of course around its main pivot and of course the pusher is rotating as well and then let's uh, have a look how it works together with all these hydraulic components. If we rotate the lever the pusher now is pushing forward the, poster, uh, pist uh, the piston. We will build up hydraulic pressure. The hydraulic pressure then will go through this channel into the hose and then in the caliper, of course. And if we release the lever, we learned in the first video, a magic spring then will return the piston, uh, return spring will then the push the piston back and um, this is the initial situation. So that's how the lever works in general. Now let's focus on the first adjustment um, we, we, can, um, we have at that, this lever. That's the so-called free stroke adjustment. And now we see the second screw right here. That's a free stroke adjustment screw. That screw is fixed to the body of the lever itself. And if you screw that screw in, it will, it will touch the pusher and the pusher will be moved forward. So, but we will do in a second, but let's first focus on this, this uh, ceiling area. So if the piston is in the really end position, it will take some, you need some travel to reach the inlet ports and to close the inlet ports. So and if you if you if you will if you use the lever, you you move the lever, you build up pressure in the in the beginning, there will be no pressure you can build up. So it's really a weak feeling because in the beginning the, the, the inlet ports are still open and then the pressure will not build up because the oil can escape into this compensation chamber. So, but if you move the stroke adjustment screw, what happens? Basically, you put some load onto the pusher and then the pusher is rotating and the pusher is then, of course, pushing the piston to the left a little bit. And as you can see right here, we move the piston by screwing in the stroke adjustment screw. We move the piston just a little gap and then you have a much more nicer feeling. It's, it's a immediate reaction of the lever. If you push the lever, then your hydraulic system will react, react immediately. But it's, it's important to understand if I, move the, uh, if I move the stroke adjustment screw, of course, I will always move the lever. You know, there's an interaction, of course, otherwise I wouldn't push 
the piston forward. All right, so let's jump into the next um, uh, adjustment possibility of this lever. That's the lever reach adjustment. So the lever reach adjustment is because if you have smaller or larger hands, you can adjust the, the uh, starting position, let's call it like this, of your yellow lever. If you have larger hand, it's better if the lever is rotating, uh, in the beginning is rotated a little bit. Uh, outside, uh, if, if you have smaller hands, you, you can uh, just adjust the lever in a way that you can easily reach the lever, even if you have smaller hands. And to do so, to, to have a lever reach adjustment, you have the reach adjustment screw. And this is uh, influencing basically did the distance between the main yellow lever and the blue pusher. You can see the reach adjustment screw is fixed to the pusher. And if you screw this, as, if, you, if you rotate, if you screw it in, um, you, will, you, will have a, you will have a bigger distance between the pusher and the yellow lever. Let's have a look at that. So, if I screw it in, I will move the um, lever, I will rotate the lever, and if you have larger hand, that's much more comfortable for you, uh, if you if you have it rotated outwards, let's call it, let's call it like that. Um, but as you can see right here, of course, um, somewhere there is, there is an end, because um, the yellow lever will, will have some kind of a blocker. Um, and if you, if you screw the screw in, um, then you will reach uh, the blocker, let's say, of this yellow lever, and the lever can't rotate anymore. So that's the, 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 the very end position, rotating position of the lever itself, and then it stops. So if you want to adjust your lever, and if you want uh, to focus on free stroke adjustment and lever adjustment, it's really important to start with your uh, free stroke adjustment because as we saw, if you, if you screw in your free stroke adjustment screw, you will move the lever anyhow. So you will move the lever and that's the reason why you should first focus on free stroke adjustment and then afterwards you can, you can focus on the lever reach adjustment uh, and uh, find a comfortable comfortable starting position for your lever in general. All right, so this is the first part of the basic adjustments. And now let's jump into the troubleshooting. So as I explained, I had no chance to fill the hydraulic system. And let's have a look what happens if you use your free stroke adjustment screw. Uh, but if you use it in an extensive uh, way, if you screw it in as much as you can. So in the beginning, if we screw in our uh, stroke adjustment uh, screw, of course, we will, we will move the piston near, near to, to the inlet ports. But if we keep on screwing in this screw, then we, of course, will rotate the pusher and the pusher will push the piston and then you can close your inlet ports. And if you close your inlet ports, oh, let's just jump back. If you close your inlet, por inlet ports without um, pushing the lever, you will of course move the piston forward. And then if you want to refill your system, if you put your um, oil, um, Onto the caliper, you press the oil inside the system. You want the oil to travel through this channel inside uh, the compression chamber and then, of course, inside the reservoir and then uh, outside, outside this reservoir where you put the, the extra stuff on to collect the hydraulic fluid. But if the piston is to the left, then the inlet port is closed. And then if the inlet port is closed, you can't bring oil into the reservoir and then um, into your special tooling to take the oil. 
Uh, that's the reason why you never should bring the free stroke adjustment screwed in too much, otherwise you will run into trouble in refilling your system. And of course, if this is the case, then you can't push back the brake pads uh, as well, because when you push the brake, uh, back the brake pads, you bring oil pressure into the system and you want some oil to go all the way back into the reservoir. That doesn't work if the inlet ports are closed. All right, so this is again our lever. It's fixed to the table. That's why we see this clamp. And now I'm screw, I screw this, I, I use this screwdriver to bring the screw inside, inside, inside. You can see the pusher, it has basically two sides we can see the, the back side of the pusher and then if I screw it in we can see we will move the pusher so that's what we want we want the pusher to be moved but if I if I push it in if I screw it in really really um, up to the end I will push the pusher that much that the piston will be moved that much that the inlet ports are closed so be careful with this all right, so that was the first way how to um, run into trouble uh, if you want to fill the system. The second way, there's another way, and there's even a third way. The second way, what, what happens uh, with the lever reach adjustment if to screw in this screw uh, very, very much. So let's focus on that, what happens right there. Um, first, if we if we put in the screw, if we screw it in, then the lever is supposed to rotate. We want the lever to rotate, but then in the, in the very end, of course, somewhere we will then reach the blocker inside the lever itself, the lever housing itself, and the lever can't rotate anymore. But what happens if you screw even more in? Then, if you have a look at this. The lever, it's not, it's not possible for the lever to, to rotate anymore because there's a mechanical block. If you screw in this anymore, then of course the pusher is rotating. And if the pusher rotates, we will simulate it like here, if the pusher rotates, then the pusher of course is pushing the piston. That's his job. And then it's pushing the piston, if it's pu and if it's pushing the piston, it may then in the very extreme position close your inlet ports and then of course it's the same situation everything is blocked um, you can't push back your pads you can't refill your system because then uh, the, the inlet ports are closed with the with the first sealing and i can show right here this is our original lever i will show what happens if you screw in this uh, this screw and of course you will then rotate your lever that's the reach adjustment it's working like this and then in the end as you can see right here the pusher is starting to move and if you really screw it in in an extreme way as you can see right here the pusher is coming to the left and then it's moving the piston and the moving will close your inlet port and that's the end of the story there. So that was the second um, explanation why it might be um, hard to fill the hydraulic system with fresh oil and what I did so I, I released both screws, I checked the lever on a table if it's free and uh, if I can operate it, it and it was really good working and then I installed the brake levers at the bike and I tried to fill the system and nothing worked so that was really frustrating and in the end what I found out is that because I asked myself you know, the lever was, was operating in a perfect way. And the one and only thing I did, I, I, was, I was tightening the clamp, the clamp screw. And um, then I said, okay, well, if this is the only thing I did, let's release the clamp screw. And that's what I did. So I released the clamp screw and then 
it was I was able to refill the system again. So somehow I had a reaction between the clem torque of of the uh, of the lever itself and the possibility of refilling the system. So and the reason really was like if I if I put some really hard load on the clamp screw, um, I think the lever housing was deformed in a way that the piston had no chance to go back. So this is basically the situation we see right now. Um, I clamped the lever itself to the handlebar with the screw and then I pushed the lever so I clamped the lever housing of course and then I pushed the lever and afterwards the piston had no chance to go back. So the reason really was because I had a deformation then because I had a handlebar with a really narrow radius and somehow it, it didn't work really well together with the, um, with the uh, handlebar uh, housing itself. So somehow it was deformed and the, the um, hydraulic, uh, the cylinder, cylinder here of the piston, that um, hole was deformed in a way that the piston had no chance to get to its end position. And as we learned, if the piston has no chance to get to the end position, um, there's no chance for the piston to, to, um, to go back and then the inlet ports are closed and then if the inlet ports are closed of course you can't bring the old back. So the solution then was to use the, the correct torque, the recommended torque of the, uh, the clamp, clamps of the, um, of the lever housing itself and then it worked in a perfect way. Alright, so that's basically the end of the second video. So what we learned here is um, um, if you have a Shimano hydraulic system, maybe it is a or is it a different brand, it works basically the same and you have no chance to refill the hydraulic system. First of all, make sure that the screws are not in its, in its, in ex, in its extreme positions because if you screw them in like crazy they will move the pusher and they will move the piston and the piston will close your inlet port and maybe if you use a really really hard torque um, while you're clamping your lever to the handlebar uh, it might be that you will that, that will that that you will have a deformation of the of the housing of the lever housing um, and then the piston cannot go back and then the end of the port will be closed as well. So I hope you had a lot of fun and you learned a lot about the hydraulic system in general. Um, have fun, leave a comment if you want to and um, yes, go cycling. Thanks very much. Bye bye.